Scientists study grass. They say, a cow produces a milk from grass. What kind of nonsense this is? Are they crazy? How could it come into the scientists' minds? And what does it mean? A cow produces a milk from grass. Carnivorous animals can give milk. They are also mammals. Where do they get the milk from? Tiger doesn't eat grass, neither does wine. They eat meat. Where do they get the milk from? But scientists say animals produce it from grass. If a cow can produce milk from grass, we can also make milk from grass. We are scientists. A cow gives milk every day. But until today, scientists cannot make milk from grass. And they cannot do it with all laboratories, science degrees, PhDs, dissertations and scientific researches. They examined everything, but they couldn't make a milk. If you go to a store, milk that they sell is no longer a milk. Although they take a cow milk as a base, they just spoil more than it. Don't buy butter in the store at all. It's very bad, as it contains some artificial additives. It's much better when we produce it ourselves. We already have a farm, a piece of land and a cow. Step by step, people who are inclined to agriculture can master it. A pure product is a spiritual technology. Cow gives milk, making it from its own blood. Grass is just a cow's food that gives a certain virtue to its nature, that's it. But there is a need for alchemy to transform blood into milk. Chemistry cannot do that. Alchemy is necessary. It's a spiritual technology. How does it work? A law for the calf is necessary. A scientist doesn't think about it. The word law doesn't exist in scientific vocabulary. There are only such words as biology, instincts, molecules, chromosomes. What a nonsense. These are their applied technologies. Bhagavad Gita says, if you do something and you are a great man, other people will do the same. Exactly what you apply in your life, this is what is important. Therefore, people achieved great results in applying certain material principles. While we study Vedas, we should know one thing. The principles do not change in life. It's very dangerous. Only values change. Today, you have earned a lot of money. Tomorrow, there will be less. You spend it. If you are going to work, you should be properly dressed. Values are changing. If you are going to work, it's important for you to dress at the moment. It's worth it. If, on the other hand, you do not go to work and want to rest, you should dress different. It's changing. It's understandable. All, this, all these values can change. What is valuable now is to remind what we have forgotten. It's the most valuable thing now. You might have forgotten something. For example, your apartment may be messy. What should be done? What is the most important thing now? Make cleaning in an apartment is a value to giving time. You say it's very important and valuable. Efficiency, quality, restructuring. They are doing all this, but the principles don't change. Ahimsa is a principle. This is not a value, which can change or may run out somehow. Don't eat meat, fish and eggs. This is a principle. Don't destroy families of other people. Take care of chastity of your own family, of purity. Don't have illegal sex. These are applied things. Very well. All these notions are known what is bad and what is good, but how can we achieve them? Chant Hare Krishna. I will tell you this, it's not important how you will achieve it, as long as you eventually do so. If Hare Krishna mantra doesn't help you, chant Jesus prayer. If Jesus prayer doesn't help, chant Hare Krishna mantra. That's it. Use something that helps you. It's like a disease. No matter what medicine cures you, whichever one works, just use it. 
And of course, you will see that Hare Krishna mantra works. It's hardly possible put, to put any other mantra or prayer next to this mantra. Applying this principle, you should obtain an experience of what Hare Krishna mantra is.